All right, so today is Veterans Day. It's a very important to, day to me, um, not just because of my background, but because of what it meant to me when I was a little kid. Um, but for now, I'm going to use today, Veterans Day, as an opportunity to answer a question that I've received on more than one occasion. Uh, that question is, do you think that veterans, in particular combat veterans, should be allowed to be police officers? Uh, it's a ridiculous question, if you ask me, and normally when people ask me that question, my response is uh, less than polite. I think it's a stupid freaking question, to be honest with you. I don't really think that the majority of the time it deserves an appropriate answer. Um, I get accused of ad hominem attacks all the time because someone will ask a really stupid question and rather than answering, I'll just say, that's a stupid freaking question. Because I honestly do believe, or and I'll, I'll call him an idiot for asking that question. I really do believe that some questions are too stupid to answer. That I'm not going to dignify that question with an uh, appropriate answer. Or a well thought out answer. Because it's not a well thought out question. Um, by asking the question if combat veterans should become police officers... The only thing that you're demonstrating by asking that question is that you don't understand anything about combat veterans and you don't understand anything about police officers. And frankly, you need to go educate yourself before you begin asking those questions because it's not my job to provide you that, inf that education. It's your job to go out and gather information on your own and not simply depend on people who are smart <laughs> to give it to you. But uh, in honor of Veterans Day today, I will go ahead and try to offer up an answer, a response to that question. Um, quite frankly, yes. Not only do I think that it should be okay for combat veterans to become police officers, but I think uh, combat veterans and military veterans have a huge leg up on regular civilians who are never in the military that want to join the police force. Um, I can tell you that, you know, when I grew up, as a, as a kid, as a, a poor kid in a small town, I went and did some farm work and stuff as a kid, but aside from that, I didn't have any real outlook on life. I had no idea what I was gonna do when I graduated high school. Um, there was really no option for me with based on the level of education I had. Um, I just didn't have any options. I had no direction in my life, so I went to the military, honestly, my plan was to either go in the military and retire or go in the military and get killed because those are the only two options that I, that I could see at that time. So I went to uh, basic training in 1998 um, and it, it really opened my eyes to a lot of things in the world that I never would have imagined. Um, basic training alone helped me encounter. Uh, you know, like I said, I was a small kid or a, a white kid from a small farm town in Ohio and here I am in basic training with people from all over the country. There were people from Chicago, people from Atlanta, people from California, Texas, um, all over the country that I got to meet and interact with in, uh, in basic training in its own. Um, we had to learn how to work as a team to do different tasks. You had to learn, believe it or not, there's different cultures in the United States. And uh, I learned a lot about different cultures simply by being in basic training. I remember there was one guy, I can't remember his name right now to save my life, um, but he was a huge, he had a huge impact on me in basic training because he was a black guy from inner city Atlanta, which I don't know if you can find two cultures any more different than a, a white farm kid from small town Ohio and an inner city black kid from Atlanta. Um, those are about as far ends of the spectrum as you can get as far as I'm concerned. Um, then you go from basic training into your unit and the teamwork and all that stuff and all the interpersonal skills, those are all tools that you really have to learn. Um, there's differences in people and conflict, conflict resolution. These are all tasks that you pick up in the military. Uh, the, your ability to get in shape and be in shape be disciplined, be somewhere on time, um, be dependable, keep yourself looking good, ironing your uniform, polishing your boots, 
these are all very basic things that veterans bring to being a police officer that civilians might need a year or two to pick up on. Um, and then the other part of that is specifically geared towards combat veterans. This is something that is really irritating. Um, Cause yeah, I was in combat. I was in combat for three years, but people don't understand what that means. Like even like I was on a uh, kind of a unit or an MOS that we went out on patrols. I did a lot of combat patrols, but when I was on a patrol, I wasn't simply looking for somebody to kill. That's not what you do. Um, when I got to Baghdad, we were given a eight or 10 digit grid coordinate. We were said, we were told, hey, there's an Iraqi police station out there. It's your job to go out and find it um, and to man it and to teach the Iraqi police how to be police. Um, we had to, we drove around for hours looking for this building. We finally found it. Uh, it didn't look like a police station to us. It had no windows or doors anymore. It had been burned out, torched, um, because there was a lot of looting and stuff that happened in the beginning of the war. So then we finally find this building. We go inside and there's like four Iraqi police officers huddled in this building, hiding with AKs. Um, we, we determined that they were actually good guys, but we couldn't speak to them. We didn't have an interpreter. The way we got our interpreter was we had to hang a sign out front that said, hey, we're Americans. We speak English. We don't speak Arabic. Uh, we need an interpreter. That's how we hired our first interpreter. And our interpreter was a, uh, an, a guy who was educated in Britain as an electrical engineer. So he came and started teaching us about their culture, their customs. Um, then we'd go out on patrol. And when you're out on a patrol, the way we did things, we would take a couple of Iraqis with us and a couple of US soldiers with us. And we'd literally go on foot patrols around where this, this neighborhood where the police station was. We weren't going on patrol to find people to kill. We were going on patrol for a variety of reasons. We were trying to show people, hey, we're here. Um, we're not afraid of you. We're gonna come out into town. And if you think about doing something, you're gonna die. Um, we were also going on patrol so that we could learn how people in the community acted when things were normal. Uh, so we would go on patrol and we would know what corners normally have people, what cor corners generally don't have people. Um, where does trash normally collect on the side of the road? Um, are there kids normally outside? Are there kids not normally outside? And then if we went on patrol later and some of those things were different, that would alert us that maybe uh, we should be on the lookout or maybe we should be extra careful or maybe honestly we should go ahead and take our patrol and go back inside because something extremely bad was about to happen. Uh, it was more about learning the culture and the people around us than it was about going out and killing people. And that is very much what you do as a police officer. You know, when you become a police officer, you get into this neighborhood, it might not be where you grew up or where you live, um, but you're going on patrol every single day and you're learning the ins and outs of these neighborhoods. Um, you have to use your peripheral vision as you're driving down the road you're looking at the people on both sides of the road looking to see if somebody's doing something bad or maybe if there's just a person who's you're driving down the road and someone's overdosing and you have to stop um there's been multiple times when i was working at night even that i was driving down the road and out of the core of my eye i saw somebody laying um, in the gutter right next to the side of the road and i had to get out and treat that person and save their lives, get them to the hospital. Um, these are all skills that you pick up in the military that you'll, you'll eventually get when you're a police officer, but um, <clears throat> it might take you a little bit longer. And like when I was on coaching, I already had a lot of those skills fresh out of the academy, which contrary to popular belief, you don't learn how to be a police officer in the academy. Uh, you get hired as a police officer because they think that you're able to do the job. When you go to the academy, you learn a little bit about the law and you learn what not to do to get in trouble. And you learn how to be a good police officer when you're out on the street. So I took a lot of skills with me from the military out to the street that I would not have been able to learn anywhere else. Um, and then I want to tell another story from my time in Iraq 
that would really kind of illustrate kind of my feelings on this. And one of the things that's kind of, that's intangible that good police officers have and that people pick up when they're in combat environments is the ability to very quickly make um, very serious decisions. Uh, you're faced with an adverse situation. This is a life or death situation and you have moments to decide if you're gonna die possibly or if you need to take someone else's life or if it's okay to continue on with what you're doing because even though there's some danger signs out there um, you're not actually in immediate danger. Um, one of those situations that I like to tell people about is when I was in Baghdad, especially early on in the war, we would go out, they had like an outer belt around the city and we would go out onto the outer belt and nobody was allowed to be out after dark. Um, maybe it was after dark, maybe it was after a certain time, I, I can't really remember. But we'd go out onto the highway and we would have like 10 vehicles with us and they, we all had like these lights on top of them. Um, we would set up roadblocks. We'd throw some flares out on the road. We would set up a roadblock and you'd have a series of steps that these vehicles would have to go through to get by you. Um, what we would do is we'd have vehicles strung out and then kind of at the point where they'd be dealing with the actual soldiers, we would have a cluster of vehicles. Um, those vehicles, you know, would be the ones you'd have multiple machine gun overwatch positions, and then you'd have a couple guys out on foot walking up to the actual driver and talking to them and stuff like that with the help of the interpreter. What I would do is I would position myself down the road as in I was the closest one to oncoming traffic. So I would see cars coming towards me and it would be my, I'd be the first one to judge whether or not this was a threat or this was somebody that was gonna comply with what we were doing. And one, one particular night, while we were doing one of these roadblocks, I was out there and there was a car that comes screaming towards us. Um, I can't tell you how far away the car was, but it wasn't slowing down like cars normally slow down when they're coming towards us. By this time, everybody should have known what was going on. You know, everybody knows that there's gonna be rolling roadblocks and you're gonna be stopped repeatedly if you're out after night, after dark. Um, there was multiple television commercials and radio warnings and all this other stuff. So I'm standing out there and I've got a car that's barreling towards me from several hundred meters away. And I was a Sergeant E5 at the time. So I had my M16 with a 203 grenade launcher underneath it. Uh, I didn't always have a round in the tube because I didn't know what kind of round I was gonna to need to fire. Um, I carried smoke rounds with me. I carried star cluster rounds. I carried parachute uh, flare rounds. I, and I also carried high explosive rounds. So on this particular night with this car coming towards me, I remembered, oh, this doesn't look, <laughs> this doesn't look good. Um, pulled out a, a high explosive round, put it in the tube. Um, I was very proficient with the, uh, the 203 and I knew that I could probably get pretty close with it if I had to. So I went ahead and took up a, a position where I'm aiming at this car and I decided if it gets to the certain point, I think there was like a, um, some kind of road sign or a light pole or something at this point. I had already yelled at the guys like, hey guys, perk up, there's, there's somebody coming, this might not be good. And I was aiming in on this point down the road, just aiming in, aiming in, I'm watching this car come closer, closer, closer to get to that point. And at the absolute last second, I see this, the, the front end of the car just dive down to the ground. Um, that's the sign that the car is braking hard. So this guy was screaming towards me and then at the last second he saw me. Um, they, they did what they were supposed to do. They turned on their flashers, they slowed down dramatically and they crept up. When they crept up to us, I had already called forward our interpreter and some of the other guys. So instead of stopping where we have the whole overwatch position in all of our vehicles, I stopped the vehicle up by my vehicle with a couple of people. We, we walked up on the car to clear it. We looked in the back seat and um, in, the, in the back seat of that car was a woman having a baby. Um, 
if they hadn't slowed down exactly when they did, I would have probably killed them all with one grenade round. Um, but I didn't because I was able to think clearly in a very high pressure situation um, in a very short period of time because when you're used to this kind of these kind of events uh, people will tell you that the world the world slows down um, it really does so because of the background that I have and a lot of the experiences that I've had when I'm in these high pressure situations the world really does it slows down um, seconds seem like they take minutes it's it's really an incredible thing um, so that is just one story that I wanted to share with you so if you ask me what my thoughts are about veterans particularly combat veterans who become police officers um, I would say emphatically that I think they make great police officers and that they should be allowed to be police officers and that anyone who thinks contrary is um, they're not educated enough that they should have an opinion on the matter so those are my thoughts for today thank you for watching happy veterans day to all the veterans out there be safe i'll talk to you soon